Good afternoon and welcome to Winchester Cathedral to the service of Evensong according to the Book of Common Prayer. If you're in the building, you'll find an order of service in the choir and presbytery. If you're at home, you'll find the information adjacent to the live streaming site as we go along. The presenter will announce it. We're very grateful to have had for a whole week the delights of the Millennium Youth Choir from the RSCM. They've given us wonderful service and we wish them all well as they go on their way after this service. God bless you. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving. To make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace. And to ask on behalf of all such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the almighty and most merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of his Holy Spirit. Amen. We join our, all our voices together in song now as we hing, sing the opening hymn. That's number 141, which you can find here in the building in the green hymnals you may have nearby. Online, you can find an online hymnal in one of the links near the live stream. Number 141.
We sit as the choir sing the appointed psalmody for this evening, Psalm 107. The first 12 verses are sung, after which we stand again together. first lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, mortal, I'm sending you to the people of Israel to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And you, O mortal, do not be afraid of them, and do not be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns surround you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words, and do not be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them 
whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. I looked and a hand was stretched out to me and a written scroll was in it. He spread it before me. It had writing on the front and on the back and written on it were words of lamentation and mourning and woe. He said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. And he said to me, mortal, eat this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. And then I ate it. And in my mouth, it was as sweet as honey. And he said to me, mortal, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. Here ends the first lesson.
the epistle to the Galatians, chapter 1, beginning at the 11th verse. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Kephas and stayed with him for 15 days, but I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. See ya. in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. good counsels and all just works to proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless this Cathedral Church, the Diocese of Winchester, the Benedictine community of Fleury and the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do please sit. This evening's anthem, Thou, O God, art praised in Sion, was composed by the 20th century musician Malcolm Boyle, who served mostly at Chester Cathedral. It is a setting of Psalm 65, so you may follow the words at the back of your small prayer books if you turn to Psalm 65. It is a psalm that as our readings have done this evening, invites us to be a witness to God, who shall show us wonderful things, the God of our salvation, the hope of the ends of the earth.
He said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do please sit. This week, a libel case between Rebecca Vardy and Colleen Rooney, the wives of two players for the other England national football team, came to an end. The dispute, better known as Wagatha Christie, whoever came up with that deserves a national medal, began when Rooney accused Vardy of leaking posts from her private Instagram account to the Sun newspaper and wanted her, as it were, to eat her words. This year, the case of who said what, when, escalated all the way to the High Court as Vardy sued Rooney for libel, that is, ironically, you may think, the crime of injuring another person's dignity. <laughs> Witnesses were called and recalled. Testimony was taken, photographs were snapped, column inches were filled, coffers chinked. This week, the court finally ruled to dismiss Vardy's claim on the basis that Rooney's statements were substantially true. I can't remember what the whole point was in the beginning, maybe you do. It is not a very edifying story in any case, and the internet is full of similar stuff. Our courts packed with claim and counterclaim, witnessing to a world of very bizarre priorities. This afternoon, in our chamber, we have two expert witnesses of our own, a prophet and an apostle. To both, God said, you shall speak my words to them, and whether they hear or refuse to hear, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. Both of those readings are an encouragement to us to offer ourselves as witnesses in a very different sort of dispute, to give testimony to those whom we know and who we meet from day to day, to inspire faith in them, faith in him who is faithful to us. Now, I wonder whether you've ever considered yourself as a witness or, indeed, as a prophet. For many, I guess, not. But what I want you to go away and consider this evening is that perhaps we ought to. A prophet is not, after all, a fortune teller. Really, a prophet is very similar to a witness. A witness to the difference between the present, which is ours, and the future, which is God's. The difference between God's view of our world and ours. The difference, however glimly we have dim glimpsed it, dimly we have glimpsed it, that God makes to our world. But unlike in the high court, God is not after expert witnesses, not even like Paul and Ezekiel, merely eyewitnesses like thee and me, any of us who have simply noticed something going on in our funny world. What God's eyewitnesses are called to testify is to is the gap that we notice between us and God, our experience of life without God and with God, the difference between our present life and the hopes we can have because of God. God's eyewitnesses, of course, are called to say to those in powers, hey, this gap is way too big, get your act together. Or to those who are suffering, hey, you know that gap may not be as big as it seems, God is with you. Or to remember to one another, our priorities are mixed up. And who said what to the Sun newspaper may be less important in the end than what the Son of Man said to who. God's eyewitnesses are called to point out the gap that exists for all of us as we walk on life's journey together, the God gap. And us as eyewitnesses, we should not heckle or condemn. We should speak truth as we have found it on our way, inspire others to seek it out with sensitivity and love. 
Because the gap between what we are like and what God likes is a very precious and special place where we each experience life in its fullness and in its fragility. It is the place we call the learning curve, the practice room, the place of growing and stretching and overstretching, the place of epic fails and quiet triumphs. God's witnesses shouldn't heckle or condemn, they should speak the truth to inspire with joy because the gap between what we are like and what God wants for us represents a hopeful call to a deeper life, inward, onward, upward, into God's adventure, fullness of life. And so the truth is, friends, whether you are leading worship in song like the singers tonight or up there on the organ, keyboard, or back at the office or in the club or in your house or in your classroom, we have all noticed something, have we not? Otherwise, why on earth are you here? And so we are all called to take the stand and be a witness for God. We're all called to bring others to explore this God gap, to draw others into that exploration of the mystery of God. How might I do that, you may ask? Well, two extremely quick pointers for our readings. We all want to get off and see the lionesses triumph over the old foe. Eat yourself so that you can feed others. It's what God was weirdly pointing out to Ezekiel. And Tess, more eruditely, pointed out this morning in the sermon. Read your Bible yourself. Get some notes. Study online. Go onto YouTube. Buy a book. Read spiritual books. Try and pray each day. Get your basic spiritual exercises back up and running. If you have lost sight of them or they're a little bit weak, this week, get out and get on your spiritual exercise bike. The more first-hand experience you have, the better testimony you will be able to offer others. Two, that was the first point, and yes, we're nearly done. Use your own story, not just the big story, but your particular story. That's what St. Paul was doing. Those are the words that uh, God gave to Ezekiel. Imagine, here's your experience, digest them. Sweet as honey, as God's gift to you, give them to others. Whether you're a faithful, lifelong Christian, whether you're angry or concerned or intrigued or compelled, whatever reason you're sharing tonight's act of worship, even for those at home, of course, Speak to others about that experience. Speak to them about this experience. Tell others where you've come from and where you're headed. I promise you that your story of exploring that space between us and God will inspire, it will provoke. That's what St. Paul found. That's what Ezekiel found. You will help and strengthen others on the way. Unlike the now happily ended Wagatha Christie trial. The Christian faith has no press gallery. There are no spectators. It is not a closed trial. We are all involved. All of us find ourselves affected by God and so we're all in it. That does not mean becoming a spiral eyed religious maniac witness. It doesn't even mean wrapping up your doubt in some kind of false certainty. As St. Paul pointed out, you don't have to be perfect, you only have to be faithful. To share your stories with warmth, intelligence, integrity, to share with others whatever you have seen and known and glimpsed. We are all called to speak his words to others. And whether they hear or whether they refuse to hear, even so they shall know that a prophet has been among them. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we give you thanks for this day. And as we gather here to worship and offer you our final prayers, we pray that we may, might be so filled with your joy 
through our belief in you that our hearts overflow with love for you and for all we meet along our journey's road. Help us to share with them what we have glimpsed of you. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, give your wisdom and heavenly grace to all bishops and priests and deacons, especially to Debbie, our bishop, and to all others who hold office in your church. Watch over and be with all those who attend Lambeth Conference at Canterbury, that by their witness and our faith, others' faiths may abound and grow and your kingdom may increase. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, in this uncertain time as the war between Russia and Ukraine continues, we ask, Heavenly Father, faithful God, that you would drive away despair from our politics, revive our dreams of justice and truth, restore our prophetic passion for what is good and right, and give to our leaders wisdom and sensitivity to work for unity, peace, and the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Love and God, we pray for all those who seek healing of body or mind or spirit, that they would be touched by your loving hand and know your peace and your presence with them each step of their journey. As we are asked, we pray particularly for David, Monique, Bridget, Hiko, David, James, Simon, Chamsa, Angela, for Chukwuma, and for all the congregation at All Saints Motherford. Look with mercy on the departed, that they may see your salvation and find their peace and perfect rest in you, O Lord. Receive in your mercy the souls of Richard Seal, Martin Howe, of Daphne Dell and of Robert Fletcher Harrison. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Time to stand again for our final hymn, number 248. During the hymn, a collection will be taken. The basket will be passed around the pews, but if you wish to give more directly, there's a QR code and address on the inside white cover of your order. Hymn 248.
May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>